Welcome. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to evaluate this integral using the method of partial fraction decomposition. So the first step is normally to factor the denominator, but that has been done for you already. So this is denominator here is fully factored. We have a unique linear factor, and then we have one irreducible quadratic factor. That is x squared plus 4 cannot be factored over the real number, so this is an irreducible quadratic factor. If you're following along with the printed notes from Canvas, I would suggest doing this partial fraction decomposition work towards the bottom of the page. Otherwise, um, do this on some scratch paper. So we have 10 over x minus 1 times x squared plus 4. And now let's take care of the um, linear factor first. So that is, I'm going to write a over x minus 1. And in fact, I'm going to leave a little more space on the left, and you'll see why soon. And to that, I'm going to add some linear term, that is bx, divided by the irreducible quadratic term. And then I'm going to add one more thing. I'm going to add a constant over that irreducible quadratic. So if you notice, I have a single a for the um, linear term. And then for the irreducible quadratic, I need two fractions here. I need um, the irreducible quadratic in the denominator of a uh, some linear thing, so in this case it's bx. And I also need the irreducible quadratic in the denominator with some constant term in the numerator. Okay, now that that is done, let's multiply both sides um, by x minus 1 times x squared plus 4. On the left hand side, this term that we multiplied by matches this denominator, so we'll just end up with 10. On the right hand side, we need to apply the distributive property of multiplication. And so when we multiply a times this um, expression here, there's an x minus 1 in this denominator, and there'll be an x minus 1 in the numerator. So we'll just end up with a times x squared plus 4. Let's do the same thing for the second term. So let's multiply bx over x squared plus 4. Uh, let's multiply it by this entire expression. x squared plus 4 in this denominator will cancel out this x squared plus 4, so you will just be multiplying bx to x minus 1. Next, we have c divided by x squared plus 4, and we're going to multiply by this expression here. There is an x squared plus 4 in the denominator and this one, so you'll just end up multiplying c times x minus 1. Now, go ahead and take a moment and clean this up. And now the idea is we want to combine things that look alike. So that is, I want to have all my squared terms together. So ax squared plus bx squared. Well, what does that equal? Well, if you notice, I have an ax squared and a bx squared. And here's my equal sign. How many x squareds do I have on the left-hand side here? I have 0. In fact, I could write this as 0x squared plus 10. So that tells me that ax squared plus bx squared equals 0. That only holds if a plus b is equal to 0. Now, what about the linear terms? That is, the bx and the c. How many just plain x's do I have on this side? Again, the answer is 0x, so I could write this as 0x plus 10. So the next equation that will help me find the coefficients of a, b, and c is cx minus bx equals 0, which only holds if c minus b equals 0 or c equals b. That is really good to know. And now finally, our constant term. I have a negative 10 here, I have a 4a, and I have a negative c. This tells me that 10 is equal to 4a minus c. Now I can start working my way to solving what a, b, and c all are. Well, already I know that c is equal to b, so I'm going to rewrite this as 10 equals 4a minus b. This means that b is equal to 4a minus 10, which I'm now going to pop into here in place of this b. So a plus 4a minus 10 is equal to 0. So 5a is equal to 10, which means a is equal to 2. Now that I know what a is, I can put this 2 here into this equation to solve for b. So b is equal to 4 times 2, which is 8 minus 10. So b is equal to negative 2. I know that c is equal to b, so that means c also has to equal negative 2. You have all just found that 10 over, what we have just done is shown that 10 divided by x minus 1 times x squared plus 4 is equal to 2 over x minus 1 plus, excuse me, minus 2x over x squared plus 4 
minus 2 over x squared plus 4. So when we're integrating this rational expression, I can instead integrate these three separately, which makes my work a lot easier. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, so I've gone ahead and rewritten this integral using the method of partial fraction decomposition. So I'm gonna again write this as three separate integrals, that is two times one over x minus one dx, minus two times the integral of x over x squared plus four dx, minus two times the integral of one over x squared plus four dx. So this integral here, I have a separate video showing how to integrate that, and that should be popping up towards the top of your screen now. If you already know how to integrate that, then go ahead and ignore this link that's popping up. This is two times the natural log of the absolute value of x minus one. Now this one we need a substitution for, so let's go ahead and take care of this one on a separate piece of paper as some scratch work. So we're going to let w equal x squared plus four, then dw is equal to 2x dx, and I have 2x dx right here, so I'm gonna get rid of all these three values and put in a dw in its place, and in my denominator, rather than having x squared plus four, I will have just a w. This is negative times the natural log of w plus a constant, so this is negative ln of x squared plus four plus a constant. So let's go ahead and put this back in to the original integral that we were, um, excuse me, evaluating. Okay, and finally, this integral here, this is of the form one over x squared plus a squared dx, and I've already created a video showing how to integrate that, so if you haven't seen it or don't know how to integrate this, please take a look at this video that's popping up in the top right corner of your screen. Otherwise, just follow along if you already know how this integrates. So this one becomes negative tangent inverse of x over two, and then finally plus our constant c. So this rational function integrates to this expression here. I hope the techniques of this video, including both the calculus explanations, the algebra review, and the additional videos were useful to you.